when you look at me, what do you see? Do you see a fashion designer, a model, a TikTok influencer? <laughs> I am a space engineer and a space tech entrepreneur. And just two days ago, I was negotiating a contract with the European Space, Train, space Agency, the Business Incubation Center, for my newborn baby, Space Dots. For the past 11 years, I've been in the space industry, masters in aerospace and astronautical engineering, specialized in remote sensing, spacecraft systems, hypersonic aerodynamics, microgravity. When I was 23 years old, I was chosen to work on the NASA JPL Inside Mars mission, the youngest Italian to work on a Mars mission in collaboration with the German Space Center in Berlin. That project landed on Mars in 2018. During the past 10 years, I've worked in the satellite innovation business, from startups to space agency to big corporations. I've moved across three different countries, from Italy, where I come from, to Germany, to the UK now, where I co-founded less than a year ago my business, my new space business, Space Dots. And just this month, we've been awarded our first public grant by the European Space Agency. All of these whilst co-holding another executive job for a deep tech startup in Atlanta in the States. Basically, I do space on every time zone. Yet, <laughs> any time I speak with somebody new and I share what I do for a living, the reaction is this one. They are like, what? You must be joking. <laughs> Four years ago, I was in the Netherlands, and I had a huge week ahead of me. And that was in Noordwijk. It's a small town on the North Sea, which is home for the European Space Agency headquarters, where I regularly go to talk about papers and my findings of projects with the space community. I remember I had, it was late at night. I had just checked in in the hotel. And I was going up into my room when this guy in his 50s, he follows me in the elevator. He looks at me and he checks me out. And he says, I have met girls like you. I know what you're doing here to entertain businessmen. <laughs> this is my room number. He assumed I was an escort. It's funny how the lenses of our telescopes have been advanced enough for us to see stars 2,000 years light away from Earth. But our perception of humanity is still tainted by the archaic gender stereotypes. And it's time, it's time to fix that distorted perception lenses. It is time for all the girls who've been scorned, for all the businesswomen who've been insulted, for all the misfits who have felt discharged and alienated by a patriarchal construct fed by fear, judgment, shame. It is time to join forces and collapse this damn system. So, how many of you do recognize this guy? Hands up. Elon Musk, CEO and founder of SpaceX, CEO of Tesla Motors, eccentric billionaire, the richest, people, the richest person alive. He needs no introduction. But how many hands am I going to see now that I show you this picture? She's Gwen Shotwell. She's an engineer, president of SpaceX and Chief Operating Officer of SpaceX. She's been recognized by Forbes and Fortune like one of the 50 world's greatest leaders on Earth. Nobody knows her. This is because for Ian's, the most relatable portrait of a space tech CEO and a space executive has been a white, middle-aged, likely billionaire man. And 
Don't take me wrong. The pioneering endeavors that they have done have changed completely the life we live at this stage. However, the use of space technology is going to take and is going to involve hundreds and hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of diversely talented professionals and people all executing together for the betterment of humanity on Earth and for our cosmic expansion in the universe. Yet, women only make up 29% of the space force. Of this percentage, 41% of women have reported discrimination against only 10% of men, clearly feeling the least welcome in the industry. Before the pandemic hit in 2019, I used to go to girls' schools around London and I used to enjoy giving talks and talking about rocket science and sharing with them fluid dynamics of our daily life, like, for example, using a hairdryer. We would talk about peaceful coexistence with new cosmic spaces and exoplanets and how we could possibly live on another planet, drawing homes and all that sort. You know what their reaction was? I didn't know rocket science was so fun. One girl stopped me when I, was leaving the ha when I was leaving the school and she said, you know what, all the STEM ambassadors who've come here, they look like my grandfather. <laughs> and she was, she, they were talking about the office job and how we should go and work for such and such. And she was, why would I want to be there? That's not my place. But then you came here and you look cool. You look like me, I like your style, so thank you, because now I understood that I have a space there too. One of the girls was asked, from one to five, how much would you choose a career in space? Five, she said. Why? Because space technology gets to create our future. We get to create our future with space technology, so we better get onto it, she said. It is true, and Melissa already said that. On a daily basis, we are all dependent on space technology byproducts, especially satellites and space exploration findings. On a daily basis, governments and billions of common people are using space technology without even knowing that. From social media to Google Maps, telemedicine, video conference systems, bank transfer, control of water and oil pipeline, you name it, everything is based on satellite communication and data. Thanks to telecommunication spacecraft, rural places and people living there can actually access the same internet service of people living in the city, reducing the, 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 the digital gap and the educational gap. In case of natural disasters, emergency responders can rely on telecommunication spacecraft network when all the terrestrial network have been destroyed or damaged. Baby food. Did you even know that baby food has been improved thanks to a Mars mission finding? A NASA-funded research group actually realized that there was a new source of an omega-3 fatty acid, and that's basically part of the breast milk. So they realized it was fundamental for infant development and obviously couldn't just be mass product. So they used that fatty acid and now 90% of all the infant formula on the market is based on that fat acid. So as you can see, space technology is the backbone of the life as we know it today. The outer space is a new source of information for humanity. It's a source of inspiration, of adaptation, of evolution. So we do get to create our future with that. And we do get to go to the next level of that humankind evolution. But how does that look if only a tiny slice of the entire population is meant to be part of that influence? If only a tiny slice is, is, being, is believed to be fit for purpose. Only 17% global of women and position in C-suits and senior positions are held by women. Only 12% of owners, founders and business women are identified as female. So what kind of future is that? Do you think that including only a few slices of that population, this future is going to be built and designed safely for all of us to thrive? 
In 2019, March, Christina Koch and Anne McLean were meant to have the first all-female spacewalk, historical lunch. However, a few days before, Anne McLean realized that the fit of her spacesuit was too big, and it was too much of a short notice to change the size because NASA didn't have a smaller suit. So after years of training, she basically had to ditch that position and give it to her male colleague, Nick Hake. Sally Wright, before she became the first American woman into space, NASA engineers have been meditating about their tampons. There was a huge debate on how many of those and how do they smell? How is it going to happen in a confined space in space? So they asked her, and in famous questions, do you think that for seven days, 100 tampons are going to be okay? <laughs> she said, clearly not. This is because the American um, uh, division of the International Space Station, the toilets basically, didn't have a waste disposal that could process menstrual blood. And NASA, only two years ago, has published that they are actually designing a unisex toilet on the International Space Station so that female can feel more comfortable. Thank you, NASA. <laughs> This is just happening two years ago. Basically, all the tools were never meant to be designed with women in mind. The average woman is an outlier on Earth and in space. And this is because, as a matter of fact, big data and futuristic designs, if they are only imposed and owned by a tiny slice of human's population, as a matter of fact, they're going to translate in a, in a in a benefit only for a small percentage of the Earth's population. So, I'm here today to just say to everyone that, that asks me, why do we do space? Why do we do space technologies? Anytime I have this conversation, I feel a sense of disconnect, powerlessness, anger, fear. People feel controlled by a system that is defeating them a system that is imposing massive scale changes with technology and space exploration which they don't understand because they are not represented. If you are not there, you feel invisible. Well, I'm here today to shatter down those barriers that have been built in between you and them, to make you understand that we don't need to look like or act like or have the billions of whatever to change the world and the future in which we are going to live. My childhood, that little girl there, my childhood was very rough. Um, I had to grow into an adult and a caregiver figure very, very early in my life, and I wasn't ready for that. As a consequence, I couldn't really bond with any children my age, and any childlike activity felt to me boring and useless. So basically, I was the subject of any bullies out there for multiple reasons. Because I was geeky, because I was weird, because I was alienated. So mathematics, physics, science, astronomy, philosophy, they became my friends. They became my escapism, my safe space, quite literally. And that coping mechanism, of drowning myself into equations and the big questions of human existence turned out to be the best career path I could possibly choose. And now my business and an entire lifestyle. As you, as, as you can tell, I was less than privileged when I was a child. We suffered big financial losses. 2008 was actually the ashest year I saw my dad crying for the first time because he couldn't pay my university fees anymore. We couldn't even pay our energy bill. I was going to lectures in the morning, working in the afternoon as a teacher, private teacher of maths and physics, and I was studying by night with candles, very Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> and. I remember enforcement agents coming, knocking at our door, day in and day out, asking us to leave. And one day I told to one of them, I said, come tomorrow, I'm teaching Newton's laws here. Well, today, here I am, 
representing the 12% of new space female founders, when nobody even believed I could get to my graduation day. And I'm immensely grateful to that girl, that small girl back in Naples, for how stubborn and a believer she was. Because if she made it happen, everybody here can. Space, like our life, is not a monopoly game. It's not a race on who is running from Earth first. Space is genderless, it's boundless, it's oneness. Now, look at me again. Do you see a far away, unapproachable character? Or do you see your sister, your friend, your partner, your daughter, yourself? It's going to happen. Humanity is going to move into space. And you can believe that you are at the absolute mercy of any big guy's decisions out there. Or, or you can decide to influence those big decisions. You can actually plan the seeds of future, of space future, in your homes, in your offices, in your communities. You can remove and ditch those stereotyped, tainted lenses that you've been given by heritage. And you can just witness with your own eyes the humankind evolve and rebirth on Earth and beyond. Just like a baby opening its eyes for the first time. The choice is yours. Thank you. <laughs>